Hello and welcome back or welcome to my fragrance channel. Today I'm so excited because I'm going to be doing my entire collection, just like an overview. So I'm going to try not to make it too long, but I'll kind of talk about which ones are like my absolute favorites as I go through and I'm going to try to give a little description of everything but if you want more detailed reviews then comment down below if there's one that you want a full video on so here we go so this is the setup that I currently have in my closet my apologies for the shoes that you're looking at at the top of the screen but this is what we currently have to work with I am basically just going to start on the left and work my way to the right so first is such an oldie but a goodie. This is Bulgari's Omnia Crystalline Eau de Toilette. This has, you know, bamboo, tea, lotus. It's very spa-like. I always say it smells like a hotel spa. I love to spritz this before bed. Next is Pacific Rock Moss by Goldfield and Banks. I think this is a gorgeous fragrance. It gets compared to Woods Agent Sea Salt, and to be honest, I don't really find them to be that similar, but I love this one in its own right. It's just kind of aromatic, citrusy, it's fresh. I think it smells like a spa in Bali. Next is another Bulgari. This is the Rose Goldea Blossom Delight Flanker. I think this is just pretty. It has like a papaya note rose. It's very just fresh and fun. It's not that unique maybe, but it's a great kind of grab and go fragrance. Next are my two Skylar fragrances that I have full bottles of. This is Midnight Moon and Indigo Valley. Indigo Valley has a really interesting blueberry note. I think it's supposed to be like blueberry mocha. Basically, I get kind of a sweet, fruity, lightly woody fragrance that's maybe also got a bit of like a creamy facet. And then Midnight Moon is probably my favorite and has a really pretty cranberry note, some vetiver. I think they're both really pretty. These are definitely my two favorite Skylar fragrances and the only ones that I've kept full bottles of. Chanel number no. five low. To me, this just smells like if you ran kind of like a lemon scented fizzy bubble bath, I don't know, like a lemon scented bath bomb. It does have a very effervescent quality and it's just light and clean. I think if you don't like the original, you know, if the original number five is too heavy for you, this one's a very like light and fresh take on it. This is Mont Blanc Signature. This one is so pretty. This is just like a creamy vanilla with some citrus in it. It actually has really good longevity, but sits close to the skin. I think it's a great, just kind of like pretty affordable, like soft, clean vanilla fragrance. You can get this on Fragrance Net for like $40, I think. Lake and Sky's Cote de Paradis is what I wish that Tom Ford's Soleil Blanc was. It has kind of almost a little bit of that I don't know, summery, almost sunscreeny quality, but in a really pretty way. It's also got kind of a powdery vanilla almond facet to it. I think this one's stunning. And actually, if you maybe overspray this a bit, it has great projection. And I wore it on like a girl's trip and got a ton of compliments. We were at the beach. So I think this one is the perfect summer fragrance. Roja 51. I'm so partial to this fragrance because I wore it on my honeymoon in the Maldives, so now that's what it smells like to me. It smells like the Maldives, and but honestly, that's why I picked it in the first place because it's this beautiful kind of warm, creamy, powdery, tropical floral. It does remind me of a Lang and Gold. I think Anna Lauren in here has made that comparison as well before, and she's so right. It does. They are very similar. I do prefer Roja's 51 because Lang and Gold pulls a little bit too creamy and almost some people will describe it as having like a banana custard quality and this one doesn't have that vibe to me so I do prefer 51. I think it's beautiful. My only complaint is the performance for the price. It's a bit softer than I wish it was so you know take it with a grain of salt but it is a beautiful fragrance. YSL Lieb. I have the original but I actually love the intense as well. This is just such a pretty white floral with crazy projection and longevity. It is so strong. It's got lavender in it as well and some vanilla. Um, I just think this one is really classy and it's a beautiful fragrance. I do have to be in the mood for it, almost maybe because it is so strong, but it always gets a lot of compliments. This is one of my husband's favorites on me and I think it's great for a variety of occasions. Like I could see wearing this to, um, you know, a date night or a special event or even on a more regular daily basis. Chanel Gabrielle Essence is really one of my all-time favorites. If you can tell how much of a dent I've put in this bottle, and I think it's a 
like five ounce, five and a half ounce bottle. It's like a giant bottle and there's a huge dent. So I've worn this a ton. Um, it is just a beautiful, beautiful white floral. It's got some red fruits in there as well. I think it's got some peach, maybe some sandalwood as well. I just think if you love white florals, this is a very well-rounded, like sweet, pretty one that's great for every day. I think this could be a signature as well. This is Creed's Jardin Amalfi. It is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, but I will say for the <laughs> performance, the price is crazy. I bought a tester bottle of this and it is beautiful. Um, it's a gorgeous kind of like light neroli orange blossom type of scent and it smells like you're in a garden in Italy or something, but um, for the price, I think the performance is a little tragic. Guerlain Aqua Allegoria Ginger Picante. I think this is such an underrated one from the Aqua Allegoria line. The ginger in this is just really fresh and almost effervescent. Like to me, this smells like you're sitting on a, like a beautiful lawn sipping some kind of a ginger spritz. There's a rose note in here as well, and it's very, very fresh and just refreshing. I love this for the summer. Pen Halligan's The Favorite. I recently got this and I am obsessed. I've actually made a decent little dent in it. This is a fluffy, sweet, pink floral powder puff. I feel like the notes in here are Oris, Violet, and Musk on the website, but I feel like there has got to be more in here because it smells more floral than that to me but it is a beautiful fragrance. It definitely matches the bottle and shockingly has a really good longevity. I wore this and then the next morning I could actually still smell it on my wrist. I usually shower at night, but I didn't. And um, so I was surprised that I could still smell it the next morning because it is kind of a lighter fragrance. Delina Exclusive. This is just such a gorgeous fragrance. It's my go-to for date nights and special occasions during the cooler months. This is just such a gorgeous, like, warm, rosy, vanilla, woody oud scent. There's not a lot of oud, I feel like. It's very, like, approachable, but just warm and feminine and romantic smelling. I absolutely love this. It is my preference to the original, but I love the original as well. Clean Reserve Skin. I originally tried this out because of Anna Lauren here on YouTube. She described this as having, like, an addictive praline note, and it is... Oh, she's so right. It is so good, but it's also got that like almost, I guess, skin-like quality. I don't know. It's a, it's a really pretty musky soft scent. I feel like it's perfect for daily wear or even like a cozy date night in. It's just, it's warm. It's just sweet enough. Again, on this one though, the only thing I will say is it does have pretty soft performance. Clean Reserve Sparkling Sugar. This is a new release and honestly, it's just really fun. I think it's like easy to wear, kind of a grab and go, fruity, floral, light gourmand. It's not too sweet. I think there's peach in here and it's just, it's very pretty. Um, not super unique, I guess, but honestly smells so good and could be just a really great, easy reach daily fragrance, maybe for school or something. Ex Nihilo Lust in Paradise. This is truly one of my favorite fragrances. It is a beautiful like Patalia peony lychee scent. Um, I'm so impressed by the longevity and projection on this fragrance because for having such a light scent profile, it is insanely like long lasting and has great projection. People can smell this on you. I think it's beautiful, has kind of a dewy quality, like a like dew covered rose petals or something. I think it's just a beautiful fresh fragrance if you love your fresh florals. Fleur Narcotique, this is actually just one of the hardest fragrances for me to describe. I don't know why, but there's something about it that's just very unique. It obviously is predominantly floral, but there's a quality to it that's very hard to describe. You have to smell it, but again, beautiful, beautiful fragrance with great projection and longevity, especially for the type of scent that it is. This lasts for hours, and I think it's definitely worth the expensive price tag. Molecular One Plus Iris. I love this one. This is my favorite of all of the Eccentric Molecules line. It's a beautiful iris fragrance with that kind of quintessential, you know, ISOE super uh, quality. It has great projection and that I feel like is what sets it apart from a lot of other iris fragrances because it's just not usually a note that has amazing performance. So I think this is beautiful. I find it to be a very calming scent. It's kind of got that aromatic powdery woody quality and it's one of my favorites. 
Meliora by Parfums de Marly. This is such just a happy kind of easy to wear fragrance. It's very fresh and bright and crisp. It just feels um, perfect for summer and spring. I think it's a very kind of feminine and delicate fragrance. Dama Bianca is definitely one of my favorite vanilla perfumes. You can see I've made quite a dent in this one. I think the kumquat note in here is really pretty and I like that it's a powdery vanilla. I love a little bit of like a violet or an iris note because I feel like it kind of elevates a fragrance and so I like that this one is a mix of kind of like a warm sweet vanilla with those powdery notes because I think it just makes it very elevated and elegant. I think this would be a great signature if you love vanilla. Next is my row of Mise en Zier fragrances. I have For Your Love, Treasure, Ombre Magique, Edition de Veronique, and Poudre d'Or. Um, I'm not going to pick them up because my arm is getting tired, but For Your Love is kind of that ambery, um, almost has a bit of that Baccarat Rouge DNA, but not nearly as sweet, much more fresh, and it has a beautiful raspberry note in it. And then Treasure is truly, honestly, both of these are one of my like you know top five for life fragrances. Um, Treasure has a gorgeous orange blossom, jasmine, and then kind of a mineral vanilla. So it's a very fresh vanilla. I feel like it's kind of equal parts white floral and vanilla. It's warm. It's absolutely signature scent worthy. Ombre Magique is a beautiful one. It is a very kind of deep um, spiced amber fragrance. It's very warm, very resinous. It's not super sweet. Edition de Veronique smells like a bar of artisanal French triple milled soap that would be in some really lovely hotel. I think it is so pretty and if you love soapy fragrances it's definitely a must try. It has surprisingly great longevity. That's one thing that I really love about all of the Mise en Zier fragrances because they are um, they utilize like molecular components. They all have incredible performance, at least every single one that I have tried. And this one will stay, I spray it on like, I'll spray it on my robe a lot and wear it to bed and it lasts for days on my robe. Next is Wilhelm's Opus Core. I think this one is so pretty. This is like your ultimate just like shampoo-y fresh scent. It's musky, it's fruity, it's got some citrus. It's kind of almost got a sharpness, but I, I quite like it. And I think this one is great for out of a shower every day. This has definitely become a recent favorite. Wilhelm Dear Polly is honestly such a unique fragrance. One of the most unique ones in my collection. It's, you know, that black tea, almost kind of a smoky black tea with apple and bergamot. I think there's musk in here as well. It's really, really unique and actually has great performance as well. I find that this one lasts a long time and I love the black tea note in this. Definitely one of my favorite tea fragrances. Intense Cafe is like a creamy, fluffy rose latte, and obviously everyone knows that Montals just have great projection and performance. Um, this one, I love it more as it dries down. Sometimes I feel like the opening can almost be a little bit harsh, but as it dries down, I think it gets like creamier and warmer, and it's so pretty. I will say though, probably like most people, I don't smell a lot of coffee in this, but I do love it. It smells like, you know, just, yeah, a creamy, like artisanal rose latte that you got at some like little coffee shop. Mon Guerlain, this is my second bottle of this fragrance. I think this is just such a calming scent. Truly to me, it just smells like lavender and vanilla. It's not super complex, but I do think it's just very relaxing. I love wearing this to bed and it's just, it's very elegant as well. I think this also could be a great signature. Tory Burch Cosmic Wood. I feel like this entire line is actually, the new Tory Burch line is actually really good. This one was my favorite from the bunch though, and it gives me luxurious hotel lobby vibes. It's very crisp and clean, kind of aromatic, woody. I think it's really kind of just elegant smelling, and yeah, it just reminds me of like the best smelling hotel lobby in a really good way. Next is by Rudo's Balta Freak. As soon as I smelled this, I was in love. I was in Dallas shopping for fragrances and I just wasn't finding anything that I loved. And then I smelled this one and I bought it immediately. It's just such like a soft citrus with kind of a creamy vetiver. 
and I guess by creamy I mean like it's smooth and soft there's no sharp edges to this fragrance it's just very very well rounded well blended I think this would be a gorgeous signature if you love your more fresh um, kind of clean scents I love to wear this just on a daily basis and it is really one of my favorites I actually wore by Rito's G Water for my wedding this is just beautiful kind of vanilla with that juniper note in it as well it's very unique I feel like and honestly is one of the few vanillas that I can wear year-round I really enjoy it I think it's very clean and just yeah this one's so pretty I've repurchased Philosicus several times it is probably one of my favorite fruity fragrances I think it is also just so unique it reminds me of standing in like on a terrace in I don't know some beautiful location there's like big trees all around you you're wrapped in like a fluffy spa robe I don't know that's the vibe that this fragrance gives me again I feel like it's a very calming fragrance and has like almost a creamy quality from the kind of the fig um milk and I think it's very very unique probably my favorite diptyque I also have Eau Rose and L'Empre dans l'eau from Diptyque, but I can't say that I reach for them a lot, I guess just because the performance isn't great and they're almost a bit too fresh for me. I think that um, they like don't have as much warmth maybe as I kind of want from a fragrance. I got Peregrina like maybe a week ago and I think I've worn it every evening since. It is just such a beautiful kind of ambery warm floral it's the perfect amount of like sweetness paired with fresh like fresh florals I feel like it smells like you know you stuffed your nose in a bouquet of red roses and there's jasmine bushes around but then as it dries down you get those uh, like vanilla caramel ambery components I am truly obsessed with this one Oud Satin Mood is definitely the strongest fragrance that I have, and I have to be in the right mood for it, but if you want a very luxurious kind of rose vanilla oud, I do think this is a great option. You can't beat the performance, although obviously I realize it is very expensive, but I do think it's worth it in the sense that you get amazing performance, and you really only need a little bottle unless you're wearing it, you know, all the time. So this one is, to me, very much for, like, date nights in the winter, for me personally, because that's... It, the weather has to be pretty cold for me to gravitate towards this one. Fragrance du Bois Santal Complet. I think this is just a lovely kind of creamy, powdery, sweet sandalwood fragrance. I can't say it has the absolute best performance, but I do really enjoy it. It's almost got a butterscotch-like quality to me. Something about the sweetness and the dry down in this has that kind of vibe to it, but it's not a super sandalwood heavy fragrance despite the name. I feel like sandalwood is not the main thing that I smell here. It's almost more like just ambiguously creamy, woody vanilla, but it is very, very pretty. Chanel Coco Noir is one of my go-to date night scents. It's one of my husband's favorites on me. I think it's probably well that and Gabrielle Essence are my two favorites from Chanel I definitely prefer it over Coco Mademoiselle I love the spicy element that note of clove in here and it's just it's perfect for date nights MFK Amorous Femme I think this is a beautiful kind of just aromatic floral for some reason I don't gravitate towards it like I should because I do really enjoy it I think again it doesn't have as much warmth as I sometimes like I do prefer florals that have maybe a bit more sweetness or warm woodiness or even vanilla but this one is still really beautiful kind of powdery and it also has great performance Cartier's luxuriance y'all this smells like ah oh, this smells like a woodland fairy it's sparkly it's effervescent it's green and honestly I'm not usually a fan of green perfumes but this one is the exception and it is so stunning. I cannot recommend trying it enough if you like fresh fragrances. Roja Elixir is one of my all-time favorite fragrances. I will always repurchase this. This is actually my second bottle and I ended up buying this because of Erin Nicole. She just described this so beautifully. It really is just such a fluffy feminine floral. It's got a beautiful raspberry note in here, some rose. I think there's heliotrope and some kind of warm woodiness in the base. It's very soft and 
delicate. I will say the performance is on the softer side. I do overspray this one, but I think it's just so pretty. I also have Roja Enigma, and this is almost like the peach version of Elixir, where the fruity note that's the most prominent in Elixir to me is raspberry. This has a lot more peach in it, and it does share similarities. I will say I prefer Elixir, but I do really enjoy Enigma. Gutel, Tenue de Soiree. I'm actually still trying to decide if I like this one. It's kind of black currant, iris, woody, and I should really love it based on the notes, but each time I've worn it, there's been something about it that's just not felt quite right to me. Duquesa by Greedy is absolutely hands down my favorite cherry fragrance. This has cherry and saffron. It lasts so well. The cherry notes in this just absolutely linger for forever and I feel like that's rare especially in a lot of other cherry fragrances on the market the cherry note doesn't last that long and this one really just has amazing longevity also apologies for the bottle it's velvet and then the gold is very reflective so it like the velvet grabs dust and the gold shows fingerprints so my apologies La Danza del Lubelule. This is one that I didn't expect to love as much as I have the notes make it sound like it would be a very heavy gourmand there's caramel, vanilla, apple, and while it does kind of smell like a caramel apple, it's in a very elevated way, a very elegant way. I really enjoy this. It's become kind of a comfort scent. I grab it before bed a lot of the time or if I'm just hanging out at home, it's very warm and while the projection is soft, the longevity is amazing. Henry Rose Dark as Night is kind of a vanilla patchouli scent. It's very patchouli heavy, but I actually do quite enjoy patchouli, so I do like this one. If you enjoy your kind of warm, woody vanillas, I think this one's really pretty. I do have Alien. I know this one is hit or miss for people, but my husband really, really loves this one, so I ended up picking it up. It's a, as most of you know, a very strong jasmine forward fragrance with a bit of amber, and I actually do really enjoy this one. Jo Malone Woods Age and Sea Salt is my like ultimate kind of soft, calming scent. I do think it's so pretty. I wish the performance was better, but I pair it with the body cream to make it last longer, which really, really helps. And um, I just think this one is very kind of soft, calming. I feel like I, I feel like I'm being wrapped up in a fluffy spa robe when I wear this one. Ellis Brooklyn Myth. This is my second bottle. I absolutely love this perfume. To me, it smells like Biolage shampoo. I love to spray it fresh out of the shower. Um, I will say, I, again, performance on this one is softer. It doesn't last an amazingly long time, but I do just think it is so pretty. Very, like, kind of white musk and light florals, so it's very clean smelling. And again, if you've smelled Biolage shampoo, it smells very similar to that to me. Apre by Ellis Brooklyn is a very cedar forward fragrance that also has some juniper. There's a bit of like a bourbon vanilla. It very much feels like you are in a cabin somewhere after skiing, maybe sipping on a cocktail. It's very pretty, very like transportive. Um, it definitely like conjures an image in your mind. Alien Goddess Intense. I much prefer this to the original Alien Goddess. The original has a lot more coconut and this has a lot more vanilla. I think that this is a really gorgeous fragrance. To me though, the jasmine in here is very different than the jasmine in Alien. I feel like the Alien Jasmine is very kind of sharp and brighter and then the jasmine in here almost feels creamier to me. Lake and Sky Midnight 07. This is another kind of like vanilla patchouli but it has a fig note that is absolutely beautiful i think this is such an underrated one from lake and sky and i love it for day nights dolce and gabbana pour femme to me smells like an artisanal raspberry marshmallow sniff sweet ash actually really reminds me of baccarat but in kind of a more foresty less sweet way I also have Tarte Deco, which I do like as a cherry fragrance, but I will always pick Duquesa, I think, over any other cherry fragrance. That is it. That's my entire fragrance collection. If there are any that you want more in-depth reviews of, then let me know in the comments. If you're here from my TikTok, also let me know in the comments. And if you got this far through the video, it was kind of long. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.